In this lesson, we're going to look at a very specific example of a differential equation, and that is the occurrence of exponential growth. So let's let p of t represent a population at time t. Units of time there could be minutes, days, hours, it doesn't matter. We will assume that the population is closed, which means it only changes due to births and deaths. We do not have immigration or hunting or anything like that. Let's write down a differential equation that models the following scenario. The rate of change of a population, in fact, the population P of T, is directly proportional to its size. So this is a concept phrased in words, but what we're gonna do now is work through this sentence and translate each of these ideas into math. So how can we write down a mathematical expression to represent the rate of change of the population? So change in population over time. And that's going to be the first derivative of P of T. So dP dt is the rate of change of P with respect to time. And then the word is, will be equality. And then lastly, directly proportional to its size. Well, the size of the population is the current value of P of T at the moment T in question. So if we're at time T, the size of the population is the number P of T. And then being directly proportional to that means that there's a constant of proportionality k. Typically, when we write a differential equation like this, we suppress the dependence on t. So instead of writing p of t, we'll just write p, knowing that it means the function p of t. So our differential equation modeling the idea that the rate of change of a population is directly proportional to its size is dp dt equals k times p. This is one of the most famous first order differential equations in mathematics. So it's first order because we have a first derivative here, and then it's a differential equation because we have an equation relating the derivative of a function to itself. The independent variable in this equation is time t. If you wrote this equation as p prime equals kp, you might not see the t there, but it's in the background. The dependent variable is the population P. So by saying P of T, we know that the population depends on time. So that's the dependent variable depending on the independent variable. And then what I'm calling a parameter here is this number K. So for a given population, K would be a fixed number. It doesn't change over time. But not every population grows or shrinks the same way. So while this differential equation might be appropriate for two different types of bacteria, say, the bacteria populations themselves might have different constants of proportionality. So that parameter k is a constant in your differential equation that you tweak to adjust the differential equation to different real world scenarios. There are techniques to solve this differential equation in a later lesson, we will show how you would find the solution to the differential equation. But what we're gonna do in this lesson is show that the function given by P of T equals P naught E to the RT satisfies this differential equation. Here I'm replacing the parameter K with R, but that's just a letter change. And then this number P naught is just a number. So this is just some number in front of that exponential function. To show this function satisfies this differential equation means to show the function makes the equation true when we plug it in for p and dp dt. So let's find dp dt for this given function. So dp dt is going to be p naught e to the rt times r by the chain rule. So let me write that as r times p naught e to the rt. And then notice that on the right hand side, I have the exact expression for P of T. So we can say that this equals R times P of T or R times P. Okay, so here's a follow up question. We know the function P of T equals E to the RT. So here I've chosen that number to be the number one, satisfies the differential equation DP dt equals R times P. 
What if there's some other function out there, q of t, which also makes the differential equation true? What would we be able to say about q? So here's what I mean by this question. This is what I'm trying to get at. We know a general form for a type of solution. In fact, here's a particular one where I've got that leading number to be one. Is there any other kind of function q that could make this true? So is it possible that say something sine of rt or t cubed or something, some other type of function would also work? The answer is gonna be no, and I would like to prove this for you. So we're gonna do a little proof. And our proof is gonna go as follows. Let's consider the ratio q of t over p of t. Notice that p of t is always greater than zero, so it's safe to divide by the function p. We know what their derivatives have to look like since they're both solutions to the given differential equation. So let's differentiate this ratio using the quotient rule. So then we can say d dt of q over p by the quotient rule, that's low d high, so I'll write p q prime minus high d low, so q p prime, all over low low, which is p squared. Again, that's non-zero if p of t equals e to the rt. Now for the numerator, where we have q prime and p prime, I wrote those to mean dq dt and dp dt, we can replace those with the right-hand sides of the given differential equation. So where I have q prime, I'm gonna replace that with rq, so that the first term in the numerator is p times rq, minus q times p prime, so that's rp, all over p squared. But then the top is rpq minus rpq over p squared, so the derivative of this ratio is zero. When you differentiate something and you get zero, that means what you differentiated is a constant. So the ratio q over p is constant. Let's set that equal to some constant c. So q of t over p of t is equal to some constant c, which means that q of t is c times p of t, but we know what p of t is, so this is c e to the rt. That means that q has the same exponential form, so there's no other kind of function that we need to go looking for to also satisfy this differential equation. Okay, we're gonna wrap up this lesson with just some examples. In this first example, I just wanna map the quantities into the solution to the differential equation. So we would like to solve dp dt equals 4p, where the population at time zero is 100. This is called an initial value problem in mathematics, or IVP. That number four is our constant of proportionality. So if I go ahead and write the form of the solution, which we now know must solve this differential equation, we're gonna say P of T equals P naught E to the four T and then notice that if I plug in time equals zero, p of zero is p naught times e to the zero. e to the zero is one, so this is p naught. That means that that leading number, p naught, is the initial population. So p of t is 100 e to the 4t. One of the nice things about studying differential equations is that it's often possible to check your work. So I can look at this and plug in zero and I get back 100, okay, that's good. And if I take the derivative, I know that four is gonna drop down and be four times the right-hand side. So that's like saying dp dt is four times the original function p. Let's look at the second example. It's almost the same, but here the constant of proportionality is negative. That can happen. That represents exponential decay. And then we also have a condition that will allow us to fully write out the solution to this differential equation with no lingering constants. This time, at time equals one, our population will be 50. 
Okay, as we did before, the first step is just to identify that that constant of proportionality, negative three, goes into our exponent. So we can say P of t is whatever the initial population was, e to the negative three t. Now let's plug in t equals one and p equals 50. So at t equals one, we have 50 equals whatever the initial population was, e to the negative three times one. So our initial population, we just divide over and we get 50 divided by e to the negative three. It's probably more natural to write that as 50 e to the three. So the solution to this differential equation will be p of t equals 50 e to the three, e to the negative three t. And then if you like, you could actually combine those exponents together to write 50 e to the three minus three t. We know this satisfies the differential equation and from the last form I put it in, you see that plugging in t equals one makes this e to the zero, so that gets us back to our population of 50. Let's finish up with this example. Suppose a bacteria population doubles every 10 days. Find the growth rate, by that I mean the parameter. How many days does it take the population to triple? In this problem, we don't have an initial condition. I'm not told what the population is at any specific time. But one thing that's neat about exponential growth, neat and also a little bit scary, is that the doubling rate is always consistent. So a population that doubles every 10 days could go from five to 10 after 10 days, and then from 10 to 20 after 10 more days, and then 20 to 40 after 10 more days. And so you get those really fast population growth. And that's why exponential growth can be a little bit scary when you're talking about say disease modeling or debt or something like that, because it keeps on say doubling after the same amount of time, you can get really explosive growth. So our goal is to write down P of T equals P naught E to the RT, where we're going to find R and we're going to be able to tell you how long it takes the population to triple without ever knowing what the initial population was. In fact, we can't know that. Now after 10 days, our population doubles. So what you can do is imagine plugging in t equals 10. On the right hand side, that would look like p naught e to the 10 r. And on the left hand side, we know that our starting population has doubled, so that's going to be two times the original population. Now this always happens when you're given this kind of information about exponential growth. The starting populations don't matter when you're looking at doubling rate. So we end up needing to solve two equals e to the 10 r. We take the natural log of both sides. On the left, it's natural log of two. On the right, it's natural log of e to the 10 r. But the way the natural log and exponential function work, that's just 10 r because they are inverse functions. Okay, our goal is to find that rate r. So we'll say r equals natural log of two divided by 10. Now, if you want to, you could type that into your calculator to see what it is, but I'm gonna leave it in this exact form. Let's go back to our model now, where we're never gonna be able to write down that initial population, but I'm gonna fill in everything else. So P of T equals the initial population E to the natural log of two over 10 times T. So that's all up in the exponent. Let me rearrange this a bit. So going down the right-hand side, that's the initial population E to the natural log of two times t over 10, just moving terms around. Now we're gonna use the property of exponentiation. Often the direction we go is e to the a to the b is e to the a b. But in this example, what we're gonna do is start with the form on the right-hand side, which right now in my demo over here looks like e to the a b, and decompose it as e to the something to the something. So in particular, I have the product of natural log of two and t over 10. So we're going to write e to the natural log of two times t over 10 is e to the natural log of two to the t over 10. So let's do that and see what happens. So we get the initial population times e to the natural log of two, which is raised to the t over 10 power. The reason why I like that form, it just simplifies. 
e to the natural log of two is two. So this turns into the initial population times two to the t over 10. So you can see there that when you plug in t equals 10, you get a factor of two. If you plug in t equals 20, you get times two times two. If you plug in t equals 30, you get times two times two times two. Okay, our final question was just how many days does it take for the population to triple? So what we wanna do is say, let's imagine that the population is now three times where it started, how much time has gone by? So if I write three P naught equals P naught times two to the T over 10, then once again, the initial populations cancel out. That shouldn't surprise you. You could take log base two here, but I always stick with natural log. So I'm going to write natural log of three equals natural log of two to the t over 10, which by properties of logarithm is t over 10 times natural log of two. And then we're just trying to solve for t. So the tripling time is going to be 10 times natural log of three divided by natural log of two. I'm about to put down a decimal approximation for that, but you can make a prediction. It should be between 10 and 20, right? Because we double after 10 days, so we quadruple after 20 days. So you might predict it's between the two, and you're right, this is approximately 15.8 days. Okay, that was a quick look at how the exponential function is a solution to the differential equation, dp dt equals k times p. Later, we will revisit this differential equation so that instead of beginning with the function and verifying that it is a solution to the differential equation, we will find the function ourselves. Thank you for your attention.